I got Wes Smith coming to you, Two Witnesses YouTube channel, and I'm just presenting to you, you know, the, the, what Lord put on my heart. He told me to talk a little bit about temptation. And, you know, right now we living in a time where temptation is at every corner. When you turn on the TV, when you turn on your computer, when you go to social media, YouTube, wherever it is, you, you see temptation. When you walk out your front door, you see I halfway naked women, halfway naked men, all these different shows with pornography, soft porn going on and all those different things. You being tempted. Then you got all these different beer and, and, and different commercials with drinking. And then you on every show almost they got you know people taking alcohol and doing this and that and i'm gonna say this because i used to be an alcohol i used to be a, a, a addict i used to be you know out there with women and doing this and that and you know what every now and then i feel my string being pulled i feel the devil talking to me in my mind he trying to tell me that it's okay just to reach for that thing and if i reach for that thing I, you know what gonna happen it's gonna be like a couple years ago i reach for that thing and when i reach for that thing you know what happened i fail i fail a little bit because where i could be right now in the lord i ain't because i could have been walking a little bit closer with them. But you know what happened? I fell a little bit because I reached, I reached, I reached. And when I reached, I hurt myself. You know why? Because then I turned around and lost my job. And to this day, I'm still paying for it. But you know what? The Lord, he has a ram in the bush. He always has a ram in the bush. But I want to tell you something. When our minds get strayed away, when the devil begin to deal with our mind, he begin to take it away. You know what happened? After a while, your heart it's going to be displaced as long as your, as well as your mind. And guess what? A double minded man is unstable in all his ways, the Bible says. It said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, but you have to give it over to the Lord. If you can't give it over to the Lord, you know what's going to happen. It says this right here in James 1 and 13. It said, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted to God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, not a tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. The carnal mind is death, and the, and the gift of life is, is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The spiritual mind is the gift of life, which is Jesus Christ. But when we have that, the carnal mind is sin, the wages of sin is death. And you know what we doing when we conceive it? We laying down there in, the, in our bed, just thinking about that woman, thinking about that man, while our wife laying right down next to us. Our mind getting all, all perverted. Our mind is just gone. It's tempted, being lost. Now, and guess what? You, as a man thinking, so is he. So you'll begin to go out and you'll begin to look at women and then you'll begin to touch. But Jesus said, if, if your hand calls you to strike, you you know what you need to do? Cut it off. So it's some things in our lives we need to begin to cut off. You know what? There's some of us out there that think it's okay. You know, dibble and dabble and drinking a little bit of beer. Drink a little bit of beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn up. I'm going to turn up. That's what we say. I'm going to turn up. But you know what? The Lord ain't calling us to do that. The Lord calling us to tell him what is written. And as we tell him what is written, guess what? The Lord aid us and secure us right here in, in Hebrews 2 and 18. He said, for in, in that he himself has subverted suffered being tempted he is able to aid them that are tempted and hebrews 2 and 18 that's what he said the lord was tempted and i just told you he was tempted in the wilderness led it led in the wilderness by the spirit to be tempted of the devil three times and then the devil up there bringing it to him he said it is written it is written it is written each time that he came that way and that's how we need to be guess what we become so double-minded a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways because when we allow temptation to come in when we allow temptation to avert us when we allow temptation to take us away from the things of God guess what all we're doing is hurting ourselves we don't realize it but it says right now that it concedes sin concedes and when it concedes when you entice when you carried away your own lust then bring forth death we had to open up our eyes, open up our heart, open up our minds. We had to realize that it is our soul that's being tainted every time we reach, every time we reach, every time we reach, every time we reach for that thing that the Lord has it put before us because the enemy is playing in our mind, making us think that it's okay. He making us think it's all right. Just a devil, just dabble just a little bit. And guess what? When I start dabbling and I start dabbling, guess what happened? My hand getting dirty. Now my hand ain't only dirty. Now my mind getting dirty. And guess what? It filtering down into my heart. And as it filters into my heart, you know what I'm doing? I'm straying away from God. I'm no longer walking for the Lord. I'm no more living for the Lord like I should be. Why? Because I'm being a hypocrite. I'm showing other people that, oh, it's okay to say that I go to church. It's okay to say that I do this. But then in the midst of, it's okay for me to go and lay down and just conceive with sin and just make up my own, make up my own little thing and say what's okay. You know what I'm saying? I could do and say whatever I want to do. I could compromise in order to lead other people astray. And guess what I'm doing? I'm no longer winning souls, but I'm leading people away from God. We need to be bringing people to God, we need to start being a light. Like I said, we need to start being a light. We need to start being a light in the midst of the darkness. Be a light in the midst of the darkness. Being a light in the midst of the darkness.
this one more time. I'm saying that because guess what? We are strayed so far away as what the church is supposed to be called to do. We're supposed to be winning souls. God has put us on a great commission. And on that great commission, we're supposed to be winning souls. Clean, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Because if we do it like that, if we do it, guess what? It says if you draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Then you cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your minds, ye double-hearted. And then, guess what? It said when you submit unto God, when you humble yourself before God, when you resist the devil, he'll flee. But guess what? Each and every time that you let the devil bring sin and present it to you, it's of your own heart. It's because you're enticed by it. It's because it's your desire. And then that's something that you want. Instead of you moving your wants and sinking in with God's will and making your knees his knees but every time we turn around and we allow the devil to just cater a little bit to us when we allow guess what at, at that moment everything seems like it's okay but guess what he do when you mess up he leave you but guess what? You got a God, a Jesus, a, a Lord that said, I'll never leave you, deny you, nor forsake you through whatever you're going through. That's why he could say he's married to the backslide. That's why he say no man can pluck you out of his hand. No man can pluck you out of his hand, let alone the father's hand. So guess what? Why choose somebody that's going to leave you in the midst of your storm? When you got a man that'll be there through, through it all with you, even when you mess up, he's there to forgive you. So I say this right now. Instead of going... Instead of going and making your bed up with the devil, making your bed up in sin, enjoying temporary fun, get some everlasting peace, some everlasting joy. Walk with the King of Kings, walk with the Lord of Lords, and watch what he'll show you, watch what he'll do. He's looking for way more to be a light in the midst of the darkness. Yes, a light in the midst of the darkness because when we are light, he said you glorifying your father, which is in heaven. So it's time to start holding our lights up. It's time to start holding our lights up. Holding our lights up and just standing there because right now it might seem like it's dark and nobody's coming. But I tell you, it's a day coming where people is going to flock to that light and they're going to want what you got. So I'm telling you right now, trust in the Lord. If you haven't given your life to him, please give your life to him today. It's of the most vital importance. Don't make your bed up in sin because you know what they said. When you, wherever you make your bed up, you got to lay in it. Don't lay in sin. Don't lay in fear. Don't be unclean. Don't let temptation overtake you. Let the Lord have his way in your life. So I plead with you now. Have, let Jesus have his way in your life. Please give your life to Jesus. This is the most vital and important. Let the Lord have his way. Let him love you unconditionally instead of trying to find love in a woman, man, place, or thing out there that ain't going to love you back the way Jesus can love you. Give your life to Jesus. He love you. I love you. Jesus love you more. I love you. Jesus love you more. Don't forget to say thank you, Jesus. Talk to y'all soon.